So far, we've looked at two models. And in the two models, we've looked at differences in resources and differences in technology as a basis for trade. And consumption, we assumed, is the same in the two countries. Right? There's no play here. The whole play is on the production side. And why? Well, because the differences across the countries in resources or technology, which affects the production side. It doesn't affect the consumption side, right? The production side would be the production possibility frontier, yeah? And the consumption side is your indifference curves, right? And that is going to be the equilibrium for the home country, right? Suppose this country produces cloth and food. Cloth is, let's say, labor intensive, and food is land intensive. Now, what happens when there's an increase in labor supply? production possibility frontier. There's what is a maximum of the two goods that you can produce given your limited resources. So where it sits, this PPF, depends on your resource constraint, right? You would like it to be as far as possible. That means you're producing more of both the goods. The further you move away from the origin, it's producing more of both the goods. Yeah? So you want your PPF to expand. You are constrained in terms of your resources. So, all right, so what happens when there's increase in labor supply? What happens to the production possibility frontier? Those of you who have your notebooks out, uh, try this. So increasing labor, you have more resources. That means you can produce more. So the production possibility frontier is going to shift out, right? Now the question is, is it a parallel shift or not? Well, no, because the good that is more labor intensive, from that side, you would have a bigger increase than for the other side. So you have a production possibility frontier, which expands outwards, but it is a biased expansion. Okay, now what about change in technology? Say agricultural revolution. Well, in that case, technology improved in the food sector, yeah, in the agriculture sector. If the technology improved only in the food sector and there's no change or improvement in the technology of the cloth sector, then you will have an outward shift of your production possibility frontier, but there would be no change in the production of cloth because there is no change in the technology for the cloth production. Yeah. And if there is industrial revolution, technology has improved only in the cloth sector, in the manufacturing sector, yeah. not in the agricultural sector, then you would see an expansion of your production possibility frontier on the cloth side and the food side would stay the same, yeah? So now, uh, once you have the price line, uh, which is also referred to as the ISO value line, I'm just going to show you what happens when there is increase in land. We know how the production possibility frontier changes. It's outward shift in possibility frontier and bias towards food, yeah? Which is more land intensive. And so let's draw that line. What if the relative price of cloth is still the same? Well, then you have an ISO value or a price line, which you are, is going to be parallel, and you're going to try and find a tangency point. So these two lines are parallel. And what you see is that the country which has more land produces more of food. No surprise there but it produces less of cloth. So what does this give us? Well, if land increases, the output mix is going to change. Yeah? We can think of it in a different way as well. It also tells us that if there are two countries, let's say home country and the foreign country, and the foreign country is land abundant and home country is labor abundant, I should call them country one and two, but that's okay then foreign country is going to be producing relatively more frontier, food, which expands compared outwards, to the home country. But it is a yeah. biased expansion. So we can think of this in terms of expansion. land increasing, or we can think of this right. in terms of two okay. different countries. Now, what about and we have the output mix that are different. You guys know where I'm heading with this? Yeah. I'll just get to that, all right. Where am I heading with this? Well, to the supply functions, right? And 
when these two countries trade with each other, if you have the demand function, which is the same for the two countries, right? And these are the autarky prices, then the world supply function would be somewhere between the two and the world prices in the middle of the two autarky prices. So the relative price of cloth is much lower in the home country. So foreign country would want to buy this good from the home country. So home country will export cloth and the foreign country would export food. It is assumed that the relative prices are going to be the same. They haven't changed. Okay. The price line is parallel even after the shift. Yeah. Yeah. And the correct answer is D. Labor is increasing. So given the prices have not changed, this would imply that the good that uses labor intensively is going to increase. All right, so, uh, second question. There is increase in land. Yeah. So the production possibility frontier is moving outwards. Yeah. Increase in land. Sugar is land intensive and cigars are whatever the other factor of production is intensive. Yeah. So in this case, the answer is B.